So I welcome you to lecture 30, crop planning and rotation design in organic system. So for this uh, lecture, so previous lecture was only introduction to transitions. When you go for the planning for the conversion from conventional to organic farming, what are the uh, organic standards for the uh, transition plan you should follow or the transition, the steps to follow for the transition to uh, organic farming. So, this lecture will be focusing what type of what are the crop rotations and what type of crops you should select in the transitions and the next lecture will discuss about the rotation design. So, which crops should be grown after what type of crops and the design and the economics of this uh, conversion to organic systems. So, um, so the, in the crop planning, so as you just uh, will discuss why you go for the crop planning because I see the crop rotations. So, that is an integral part of the organic farming as we have discussed in the introductory classes, if you go for the organic farm, farming crop rotation that is a biological cycle, soil biological activity can be maintained, enhanced by using the crop rotation. In organic farming, we do not allow to grow same crops repeatedly year after year or season after seasons. So, reason is that, so there is if you grow same crops the repeatedly, then there will be uh, more the insect pest and it is very difficult to control insect pest and disease and also that uh, influence the soil quality also deteriorated the having similar crops because they have the similar rooting systems they do extract nutrients from the same layers and the soil becomes uh, less fertile over the years. Uh, to have this one in organic farming we go for the crop rotations. So, same crops should not be grown in a field year after year. So, there should be crop rotations. So, crop rotation means is a system of growing different kind of crops in recurrent sessions on the, on the same lands. So, it may include 2 to 6 different crops with each crops having particular benefit either financial or environment. That means, when you go for the crop rotation, so you should have the economic uh, impact or the economic benefit of that crop and also the effect on the environment definitely as you are growing different crops in a, in a sequence. So, they, they have the compatible crops should be, should be, should be chosen. So, they have the uh, benefits on the on the uh, economy and also they have the they maintain the soil health and also environment on long term basis. The crops may be rotated every year or at different times in the in the growing seasons because if you grow same yeah, some crops may be they can be grown in throughout the years they can be grown in different seasons like uh, the three distinct agricultural season kharif seasons uh, rabi season and jay season you can see uh, suppose i can take a rice crop or the corn crop uh, those crops or the, you can see even tomato also so those crops can be grown uh, throughout the years you can grow in uh, wet season, you can grow in rubby season, you can grow in dry season true, but growing same crops should not be uh, done, be, should not be repeated year after year to in organic farming. Many crop rotation will include a legume that means uh, in a rotations you must see that say one legume crop is there in the rotations. So, having legume crop in the rotations, so there is a uh, advantages because, uh, because it can add uh, atmospheric nitrogen, you can, you can in the soils by biological nitrogen fixations, it can enhance the soil fertility and at the same time um, it can minimize the nutrient demand of the subsequent crops can be grown with less nutrients or less uh, resources because uh, having a leguminous crops in the system. So, so that is the crop rotations mean you have to uh, that is the integral part of the organic farming where uh, the different crops can be grown uh, to meet the requirement of the farm at the same time to have a uh, better production. So, why to rotate crops? So, uh, this is a very simple, uh, simple and already we, have, we know this one why to rotate crops. So, according to a uh, cereal legume or legume having legume cropping systems, the enhanced soil and water conservations build soil organic matter. So, having different crops in the systems because they have the nutrient removals are also different because if you say have the uh, deep rooted crops with soil rooted. So, it can maintain the soil fertility. Soil rooted crops takes nutrient from the soil layers around 20 centimeters and the deep rooted crops takes nutrient and water from the deeper layers maybe 40 centimeter. So, that is a balance. So, nutrient the deficit of the, the soil can maintain its own fertility and also build soil organic matter having a legumes in the in the systems. Provide the weeds, disease and insect control because the most of the uh, weeds if the same crop is rotated, the host plant remains same, there is rapid increase in populations. So, having the crop rotation that minimizes that uh, destroys the the host plants uh, having no host plant also this minimizes the population of the uh, pets, pests or the weeds and diseases. The enhanced biological diversity because having the different type of uh, crops they have the different uh, bio uh, agents are there, bio, microbial organisms are there. 
that means that enhances the soil biological diversity having more number of crops the different root systems different root systems have the different microbial affinity in the crops so that that have a better biological uh, diversity and also this ensures economic profitability of the farming systems having different crops together moreover you know, know earlier what happens uh, uh, beginning the farmers who are going for the mixed farming when there is no intercropping system they are going mixed farming because uh, in the same field they are growing different crops they are growing the you know um, the wheat they are growing mustard also because they having two crops in the same field it happens that if there is a um, shortage of resources because uh, in case of the drought or the in case, especially in case of dry land farming dry land area we go for intercropping system sorghum pigeon pea cropping system is very common in uh, semi arid tropic regions where if there is a stress because um, the uh, especially for peanut it does not require uh, sorry or having rr in sorghum plus rr or her does not require high water moreover the deep rooted crops and sorghum is a shallow rooted crops or the, the moderately and uh, moderately deep but the rr is a deep rooted crops they can have the nutrient demand from the different layer of the soils and rr can sustain on the drought conditions because having deep rooted it can take water or the nutrient from the deeper la deeper layers and it in the under dry conditions it, it can it can survive it can survive so uh, having two crops give a, give you a financial return as we assurance to the farmers if some crop fails due to weather abnormalities the other crops is likely to give some return so that is what to say the having uh, the rotation you say the crop rotation so profitables we have the different crops that maintain the biological diversity soil fertility and uh, because soil soil quality is improved with having different crops and rotations so that is that is one of the main component of uh, organic farming we must rotate crops and uh, see uh, the the right hand side figure you can you can see here from this the soil fertility complex in relation to external factors so if you see that this is the soil fertility how we can maintain soil fertility soil fertility means this is a complex of is a soil physical properties chemical properties biological properties the three properties are well developed and integrated then you can have the soil as fertile soil the soil structure soil reserves and soil life soil structure this mainly contribute to the the indicate the physical properties of soils that means your what is the textural class structure of the soil the bulk density porosity of the soil that indicates that in the that, that indicates the, the physical properties of the soils means the nutrient supplying capacity of the soil depends upon the physical physical properties if the soil has is a uh, bulk density is a uh, that means the this heavy soils having very high bulk density then the the less are the less porosity the nutrient supplying or the water supplying capacity because sup supplying capacity of the soil to the crops will be very very poor so that means the uh, the soil bulk density uh, the soil physical properties uh, this is uh, as a soil structure physical properties soil reserve means the soil chemical properties soil nutrient status and soil life is your soil microbial population soil is a living body soil microbial population and their soil microbial population population of the soil microbial organisms that depends upon soil structure and the soil reserves how much the the physical ambience or the physical structure is there and what is the soil nutrient available that also determine the soil microbial population or the soil life so these three are integrated because the to have the nutrient available for the crops smoothly and very the crop can take nutrient from the soil the soil should be good in the physical structure the structure is a good physical properties and have well uh, the chemical properties are well because they have sufficient nutrients at the same time the soil should be rich in microbial population because the microbial population like the urea or the say, urea chemical fertilizer as you discussed the nitrogen is available for the crop in the form of ammonium form and nitrate form as you discussed earlier class and to have the ammonium form nitrate form if you apply the organic uh, sources either the uh, uh, compost or the farm yard manures so they go on mineralization process it is slow mineralization the organic compounds so through mineralization that converted to the amines amino acids then, then go ammonific aminizations ammonifications that comes to uh, ammonium and then the process of mineralization ammonium converted to nitrate and this process of conversion either to the organic compounds to ammonium form or the nitrate form these are mediated by the microorganisms like the nitrosomonas bacteria that is involved for, for conversion of ammonium 
to nitrite and nitrite to nitrate by nitrobacter. So, this microorganisms they are involved in the process of mineralization from the organic matter to the nitrate for nitrate the new the ionic form of nutrient which is required by the crops. So, the life of this pop the populations of these uh, microbes as this as a soil life that depends upon the soil structure physical properties and the soil reserve the soil for the chemical properties of the soils how the nutrient available soil because microorganisms also require nutrient for their own survivals. So, these two if these three are integrated that means physical properties chemical properties and biological properties are integrated to know to, to, to make it a soil health. Soil health means you do not say you cannot say healthy soil if soil has high amount of nitrogen you cannot say healthy soil. Okay, it may be high for but high fertile but a short term but this may not be healthy soils. We can say healthy soils if the soil has uh, is well built well structured soil has also fertile good uh, good amount of nutrients at the same time it has the required population of microbial populations microorganism so that that can help in nutrient availability for the crops. So, it may be the high in nutrient uh, uh, mineral nutrients but nutrient may not be available for the crop unless until the soil has a good amount of microbial populations in the soils for the conversion of the 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 uh, either the organic compounds or the chemical compounds present to the ionic form nitrate form for uptake of the crop. And those the you make a healthy soil for the healthy soil depends upon the four components that you say as soil cultivation as uh, soil fertilization climate and the crop rotations. So, we uh, because soil cultivation we have discussed how the having a proper cultivation if you go for the zero tillage or minimum tillage stubble mulch tillage we have seen that in organic farming we go for the minimum tillage and stubble mulch tillage so that we can have a better carbon sequestrations and you can protect the microbes in the soils better microbial populations and you can have a better soil fertility having the minimum tillage and fertilization means you are using no chemical fertilizers you are using organic fertilizers organic sources so that so that you can enhance fertility of the soils and climate how the climate plays a role in the soil in the soil health because you know as there is a climate change. So, uh, as you see because of climate change there is increasing uh, intensity of uh, high precipitation events in that case there is a the, the loss of the top soil layers the soil erosions. So, um, that also influence the climate because having the uh, uh, high temperature also that cause a, the rapid mineralization then loss of the carbon as a carbon dioxide. So, that also influence the and soil health and finally, the crop rotations what type of crop you are choosing in the rotations that also we are as I discussed we will discussing also in the, yes, the how the crop rotation that also influence the soil health. If you see the rotation and soil quality if you take row crops or you take grass and legumes if you take row crops having more number of row crops that soil quality declines. If you see this figure if you go on taking more number of row crops means your the cereal crops like rice, wheat and maize if you continue in a rotation of rice, wheat, maize then that, that causes declines in soil fertility. On the other hand if you take the uh, grasses or the, the legume crops like your alfalfa, alpha, the cover crops you can check and the chickpea or the groundnut, legume crops or the RR even also or RR legume crops that causes the, in the improvement in the soil fertility or the soil quality improves having the legume crops or the cover crops in rotation. So, having the crops in rotations in organic farming um, including the legume crops in the rotations that enhances the soil fertility and also that minimizes the nutrient requirement of the, of the crops in sequence. So, how the uh, soil fertility uh, as a quality production as a function of crop rotations if you see the uh, if have the crop rotations uh, if having the different crops in a year or in a seasons of different crops then that prevents almost the, the influence of the pest and disease populations. So, that is of the as you follow the crop rotation in organic farming as a integral part of organic farming crop rotations the preventive measure in that case. So, many of the pest and disease populations are lowered or decreased having different crops in the rotations and also that, that uh, influence the soil fertility. So, having the less pest and disease and improvement in soil fertility that gives a healthy, healthy crops in that systems and in addition to this we have the other management or uh, the fertilizations we go for the uh, what type of the, the nutrient sources you are using or uh, the, uh, the organic source of nutrients and the soil cultivation as we discussed as soil cultivation means you are going for the minimum tillage uh, instead of conventional because conventional tillage that makes a um, the maybe the, op the opening of the soil loss of carbon as a carbon dioxide and having the minimum tillage or you can say stubble mulch tillage by incorporating the stubbles or crop residue in the soil itself. 
so that earth's organic matter to soils and the less opening of soils less emission emission of carbon as a carbon dioxide atmosphere that causes carbon sequestrations and having the cropping systems and then crop protections organic way crop protections and the nature ma the management so that gives a quality production so crop protections as a function function a function crop protections has in as a role as a better role significant role in ha having a the uh, the healthy crops or the quality uh, quality crops at the same time maintaining environmental sustainability having the building the soil fertility and less uh, uh, effect less effect on the environment because as say zero effect on the environment you can say the effect of agriculture on environment can be minimized having different crops uh, in in a systems as a crop rotation uh, so uh, the crop selection so as you see the, this lecture how the crop selection what type of crop you should choose uh, when you go for the rotations so this, there are some of the tips you can follow uh, the uh, when choosing crops follow a legume crops with a high uh, uh, nitrogen demanding crops when you go for the rotation so uh, initially you can take a legume crops the legume crop can be followed by the legume crop is a less nitrogen demanding and the legume crops can be followed by high nitrogen demanding crops so that uh, you can uh, minimize the yield loss of the subsequent crops by having the legume crops earlier because that fixes atmospheric nitrogen that makes the soil fertility and the nutrient demand external demand of the subsequent high demanding crops can be reduced uh, having a legume crop. Then grow less nitrogen demanding crops in initial uh, phase of the rotation as we are discussing when you go for rotations the beginning of the years the transition years the beginning of the transition years so choose the crops require less nitrogen or low nitrogen like leguminous crops or you can take cover crops you can take chickpea you can take peanuts so these are the, uh, say the alpha alpha or there's a lucerne also the cover crops that help in protecting the soil from the erosions and also building the soil fertility uh, if you have the cover crops at the beginning of the rotation then try to grow a deep rooted crops as a part of rotations that means you, you should follow because swallow and deep rooted not as a swallow rooted crops in sequence so if you take deep rooted crops then the nutrient demand from the top soils and the bottom soils they become the balance so that way you can have a deep rooted crops in the rotations grow uh, the same annual crop uh, for only one year don't repeat the same crops year after year use crop sequence that promote healthier crops hel the uh, healthier the environment then use crop sequence that aid in controlling weeds because if you take the the like the like the sorghum like example that control many of the weeds having sorghum are dry in the systems so the crops can be chosen that can have a less uh, weed that uh, they can control the weed populations and grow some, some crops that will have significant amount of residue they can leave the residue in the soils so residue can be incorporated in the soils as a as a in organic farming so that can add a uh, nutrient to the soil these are some of the tips uh, to be uh, kept in mind while going for the crop selections then conditions for successful crop rotations as say the, the include the use of cover crops to provide the fertility uh, control weeds and provide habitat for beneficial in, beneficial insect that means the cover crops is a lucerne is a good cover crop but it grow in temperate climates but in our case we can grow chickpea chickpea also that because the cover crops means small growing crops that cover the entire land surface and they don't expose the land surface to the um, atmosphere in that way they can build also legume crops that can build the soil fertility and they can protect the soil from erosion if there is a heavy downpour heavy rainfall having cover crops so uh, the soil can be protected either from the water or the wind erosion then have a diversity of plant species to encourage natural predators discourage pest and disease build up minimize economic and environmental risk so that already have discussed having the diversified because uh, rotations usually follow the different crops so that you can um, pest populations uh, you can you can have you can have the, the crops which can have can enhance the provide the feeding material to the natural predators so those type of crops should be chosen so that you can have bio, bio control biological control of the pest and diseases provide a balance between soil conservation and crop production by adding organic matter to the soil uh, to both supply nutrients and improve soil quality properties such as water infiltration and water rolling capacity this also we have discussed um, in detail provide weed control by altering the between the warm and cool weather plants and including the weed inhibiting plants like the rye and sorghum the, having the crops rye and sorghum they can minimize the population of weeds in the field then what is the common goals of crop rotation why should you go for the crop rotations usually 
the uh, so this is the uh, you can see this point maintain healthy soil by adding nitrogen and other nutrients in a way that is environmentally safe and conforms with regulation so uh, by uh, having the crop rotations you are maintaining the soil fertility uh, or by adding nitrogen different source uh, organic source of nutrients that say uh, that maintain the soil fertility that have no effect zero effect on the environment that is the environment safe. So, the purpose of this having crop rotation if you see the right hand side what is the benefit of this that maintains the biotic diversity unlock the living potential of the soil that means having the crop rotations and different crops uh, they can add the, nut the nitrogen to the soils in addition to the, the effect is the maintain the biological diversity bio biological diversity in the soils and also that increases the soil fertility unlock the living potential that means more of the microbial populations living potential of soils that enhance the soil fertility. So, that is the purpose of having the crop rotation. If you see that the other purpose is one the this left hand side produce nutritious food, capture solar energy wherever possible, control insect and pest diseases and reduced weed pressures. So, these are the some of the uh, break the wilting cycle, cycle among the crops in tomato family and the weed pressure for manage the rotation to confuse the weeds means you have the different type of the crops and rotations. So, disease cycle means the broken that means less disease and the, the weed also population is also because can manage the less weed populations. So, having this in crop rotation with the, with the advantage of having crop rotation the main goal we are satisfying what having different crops diversify tasks to keep the labor happy and productive all this in. So, that means having different task different activity in case of the um, you have to go for the uh, pest or the disease control for physical method or mechanical method use the light trap, ferment trap and the cars sticky cars yellow sticky cars those are used. So, by doing that so farmers are involved different type of activity different activity that gives different type of pleasures to the farmers that is one way diversify task and uh, keep the labor happy and productive all season and balance the need of the farm with the needs of the farmers and develop the spiritual relationship with the land that type of uh, the, uh, the, my, this way that brings organic farming one type of the spiritual relationship that makes attachment with the farm and refine the aesthetic quality of the fields and farm. So, this is having this the nutri nutritious food, good food, quality foods and healthy environments less pest, less disease that makes so that, that gives this type of the benefits for this uh, for the farm family. And the finally, we are going for the minimizing of farm inputs by doing the organic farming. We are using only the on farm resources or inputs are recycled, minimizing of farm inputs and provide economic stability. So, main, uh, main purpose is the increased profitability, having a diverse line of products to market. So, different uh, crops we have. So, different crops, so having the crops to SD markets, not single crop. So, many crops having together. So, that have a the chance of having the opportunity of having higher profit profitability in the markets. So, being in crop rotation. So, so farm size uh, as say and, and cover crops and crop rotations, the farm size that affects uh, cover cropping and the management of the crop rotations, organic farm plant cover crops to protect the soil, as it soil increase the soil organic matter and improve soil physical properties already we have discussed this one. Cover crops uh, may also provide habitat for beneficial insects or help the uh, remove the weeds that also we discussed most expert farmers integrate cover crops into their fields at every opportunity. So, that is what say as a cover crops or the legume crops we should have at least one cover crops legume crops in a rotations. So, in a year you have the one cover crops it builds soil fertility and they protect the soil from erosions either water erosion and wind erosion. So, that should be any expert farmer they have their intention is to put one cover crop uh, in the in the systems. Many expert farmers use a full year cover crops to restore the soil after intensive use of chemical because when you go for transition the first year they go for only cover crops that is for the large farmers they are the large farmland and for them they can uh, because uh, because this is it does not give any good income actually to maintain the soil and preparing for the transition preparing for organic. So, first year they can go for only cover crops whole seasons so that the soil fertility can be restored but the farmers have limited acres uh, less than 5 acres find the uh, that including cover crops uh, throughout the year may be a difficult for them difficult task and providing adequate rotation of the crop families of given may be a challenge. So, in that cases what they do they use only beginning of the only year once in maybe cover crops and they have to use adequate amount of the compost or the uh, mulch, mulch short term winter crops in place of multi season cover crops especially for the small farmer they do not cover the whole year as a cover crops 
they can go for the one season cover crops and they can take other measure to take care of their the soil. And as you discussed then how the crop selections, what type of crop you should choose when you go for the transition period of organic farming. Uh, usually you should choose the crops of the low nutrient demanding so that you can maintain the yield the because the, you have got choose the crops of high nutrient demanding the yield may not be maintained. So, ranking of annual vegetable based on the relative nutrient requirement the vegetables are the uh, seasonal vegetables as you say the low nutrient demanding, medium nutrient demanding and high nutrient demanding. So, these are the vegetables they have some examples are given there are many they are, they are the low nutrient demandings like bean crops, beet, carrot, peas and radish. So, these are the root crops, the root crops they have the very low nutrient demand and the bean crops, leguminous crops. So, they have the very very low nutrient demand or you can go here also chickpea and all many leguminous crops you can go for chickpea or or, or, or green gram, black gram those many legume crops can be grown like beans uh, the legume crops. So, uh, like chickpea, mung or they say black gram, green gram. So, those crops can be grown at the beginning of the rotations those crops require less of nutrients uh, mostly leguminous crops, beets, carrots, peas and radish. Those crops require medium amount of nutrient they can be grown at after growing the low nutrient demanding you can you can switch over to medium nutrient demanding crops like your cucumber, brinjal, pumpkin, spinach, sweet potato, watermelon and brassica greens also those greens are greens are brassica groups are greens are the greens vegetables. So, those crops are uh, nutrient demand is medium slightly higher than the uh, low. So, those crops can be chosen immediately after the low nutrient so that uh, the, the crop yield can be maintained. But those crops are high nutrient demanding especially the broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, lettuce, potato, tomato or sweet, sweet corn also cereal crop sweet corn they are uh, high nitrogen, uh, nitrogen demand phosphorus and as well as potash demand as we discussed potash few crops we have discussed about the potato we have discussed tomato potato requires huge amount of potash also tomato also phosphorus and potash so, uh, uh, so also nitrogen for those crops we should not choose those crops at the beginning of the transition if you choose at the beginning of the transition there will be severe loss in yield of those crops so to avoid those losses we can choose the, these crops at the latter part of the transitions when this the soil has uh, because after one or two years we can choose those crops so that the yield cannot be sacrificed there will be less loss in yield and the yield can be maintained as good as organic uh, um, chemi sorry, chemical, chemical farming uh, by having the crops at the latter part of the uh, transition. So, that is why when you go for the crop planning during the transition to organic productions choose first the uh, low nutrient demanding crops followed by uh, medium and then you can go for the high nutrient slowly you can transfer to high nutrient demanding crops as you move during the transition period. And also you can choose crops shallow rooted, deep rooted, moderately deep rooted and deep rooted and very deep rooted. If you see the crops in a transition when you go for slitting crops do not choose the shallow rooted followed by shallow followed by shallow in sequence. So, that can be shallow, deep or deep rooted uh, crops so that you can nutrient balance the uptake of nutrient from the um, from the systems can be balanced by balance like th those are the shallow rooted crops like rice, onion, cabbage, cauliflower, potato, lettuce. Shallow rooted means 60 centimeter. Those crops should not be grown in sequence together. Rice, onion, cabbage, cauliflower, potato, they should not be grown one after another because if you grow same crops one after another, then the nutrient demand from the same layer increases. The soil becomes very, becomes very unsustainable to provide the nutrient demand of the crops. So, likewise, these are the moderately deep rooted crops groundnut, tobacco, wheat, chilli, french bean, carrot is so 90 centimeter and the deep rooted crops around 120 centimeter cotton, maize, sorghum, palmillate, soybean, sugarcane, arhar and very deep rooted crops uh, 180 centimeter safflower, citrus, grapevine, coffee, lucerne. So, that means the you should not grow shallow rooted after shallow rooted. You can go for shallow rooted after deep root after deep rooted or shallow rooted crop should follow deep rooted crops so that soil the fertility can be sustainable to meet the demand of this crop in a cropping systems. So, if you see the schematic uh, summary of the crop rotation as we discussed in the crop planning how we go for the crop planning in the crop rotations. So, in a brief, a brief we will discuss then in the next next we will discuss detail about the about the uh, rotation design. See this one uh, as you go for the as you discuss the planning if you go for planning what is your goal that is the life and the farm goals so, if you go for the goal set the goal 
set the objectives. So, when you go for the organic farming as a uh, conversion or the transition from the conventional to organic, you first the set the goals, then income goals and income requirements, then you see the market opportunity, then the production options. So, this to have, so initially you have to set your goals, then set your the income, how much income you are expecting, your target benefit, benefit profit, out, 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 output, then what is the market potential, the market opportunity, then you can have the production options, production options based on the what is the resource and the technology available and the market. And so, this resource and technology that is your, this is your resource and technology that gives your productions. That means, resource is your labor or the field, crop, climate and the equipment uh, limits, so the technological know-how. So, that gives you a the crop plan based on this the labor, field, crop, climate and the equipment. So, that based on this resource available and the technology, so you can have a, have a production options that can production options that gives you the crop rotation crop mix. You can decide what type of rotation design you can fix, which crop has to be grown and what crop should follow which crops, how you can make a rotation plan, rotation design for the organic systems based on your resource, based on technology, based on the market potential. Then you can take the support from the institutions as a know-how, technical know-how, consultancy can be taken from institution and with this we can have a crop mix, then match field and the crops. So, sometimes there is you can have a alternate plan also. When you go for any business plan, we should have a alternate plans. That means, the weather and other uncontrollable events, if there is some unforeseen events that like weather or something else, then you, ha you can have the looking at the then market opportunity, production options, then you can have a alternate, alternate crop, crop plan. So, likewise, you can, you can have a uh, set your the plan and set your rotation design based on the the resource available with the field, field, what type of climate is there and what uh, the technology you have and the market demand, what where you want to sell your products. So, if, that means, if you do not know where to sell, do not plant it. So, you have to see the market accordingly, you can have a balance as a mix, as a crop mix, what type of rotation design you can fix and once you have the rotation design, then you, ha you may have one alternate plan also. If there is something unforeseen event takes, weather uh, abnormal, there may be drought, there may be flood problem. In that case, how you can tackle the situation? That will also some alternate proposal has to be made ready. So, this is what the, the summary of crop planning. May, the many expert farmers do extensive planning say, and record keeping of the on paper. So, that is very important when you go for the record. Most uh, have um, some from field maps, some use computers, a few keep all details in their, in their heads. The most of the panel farmers agreed that farmers should write down their field records and make a plan should be record. Many of the key responsibilities and tasks requires reflections and observations as well as informations. So, this chart illustrates the central role of rotation as we discussed role of rotations uh, in the overall farming operation. So, that if you, if you go for the rotation design, how you can make a crop plan, you should keep in mind what is the resource, what technology, what market you have, then accordingly you can make a crop plan and go for the implementation. So, this is how, so different as example of crop rotation in India, different type of crops, you have the root crops, you have the cereal crops, you have the uh, legume crops, you have the fruits and you have the uh, brassica, uh, brassica family. The, oh. So, different type of crops, legumes, so those crops can be rotated in a system so that uh, you can you can maintain the soil fertility, you can, you can maintain a better soil, soil health you can have a better quality of produce and you can have a better environment to live in. Thank you very much.